So in this video, we're going over the common issues that you're gonna run into on a Linux system. So this is one of those things where people have issues or they just don't know how to tackle them. Much like in Windows where you just don't have a functional bootable system or something happens, that's what we're gonna to cover today in this video for Linux. Because there's many times you'll do something silly and then all of a sudden your system won't boot. And I'm just gonna go over the basics of how to recover your system. Should should something go awry and you need that time shift backup or maybe let's say you do something in your fstab file and your system will boot properly how to fix that and then just minor grub tweaks you can make on the fly to get to let's say a bash console so you can actually go ahead and fix the machine so all these things are what we're going to cover today just to do a brief recovery on a linux box because this is extremely vital uh that i think literally everyone should know This video is sponsored by CDN77, a content delivery network chosen by the European Space Agency and CentOS. They have over a 14 terabits per second global network, real-time technical support, and 100% transparent pricing. And that is just a few reasons why Hubble images are delivered around the Earth using CDN77. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, set up time shift for backups. Like, I'm running an Arch-based system, which is Manjaro, and it's really good, but I know that an update could come along with a new kernel or something that my system wouldn't like and completely crash things. And if I had a backup, it would easily revert back to that, which is awesome. So make sure you're doing daily backups. I like to do at least a week, but always do that. If you haven't seen my video on time shift, check it out. But... With that, let's go ahead and break something. So uh, I'm gonna pull up terminal here and we're gonna change the boot order because a lot of times you're messing around with external boot devices. Let's say you're connecting to a Samba share, you'll easily jump out there and get that. So uh, with all that, let's just go nano etc uh, f stab and we're gonna need sudo for this. And from here, you can see what the f stab is. Now I'm gonna just take this two terabyte drive and we're gonna do some shenanigans here. Let's say I wanted to type in some extra command I wasn't aware of, I write this out, and then I do a pseudo reboot. Now, this there's a couple things that'll happen here. Now, on the grub screen, you can launch directly into um, the actual shell if you need, but uh, there's also let's say what the error we get when we have a bad F stab too, we might be able to get to shell from that way. So I'm gonna show both methods, depending on whatever distribution you're running, a mileage will vary, but you'll be able to at least get one of these methods. All right, so this is the first method. It says, hey, unable to mount, you can see the failure at the top of the screen here. If we read the message, it says you're in emergency mode after logging in, type in journal to view logs, blah, 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 blah. So what you do from this screen is just type your root password in to go into maintenance mode. Now we'll go ahead and type root password. And now we're in maintenance mode. So we could do a nano etc f stab and fix it from here. Now, what happens if this doesn't work? There's a lot of times, I know on some of my Ubuntu installs that I've done and I've had some issues where I couldn't actually get into the shell um, it, or even get into anything to repair this. Um, we had to go a different tact. So let's go ahead and quit this out. We're gonna go ahead and reboot our system. So let's go ahead, reboot again now if you didn't get a grub menu like i didn't hold shift when your computer's booting so i hear it going on in the background i'm holding shift right now as soon as i see the bios screen and by holding shift i should get this so from here we can go into advanced options and then let's say we want to edit this kernel so we can go edit kernel and if we come down to this line now, which line is it? How do I edit grub, all these things? This is the one tip I can show you. Look for the line that says V-M-Z-L-I-N-U-Z or Linus. <laughs> and basically what this does is we can change a bunch of stuff. So I got a ton of different stuff happening on this. Yours is gonna look something more along this line. So 
with this, I can actually edit and, and do it. Now, this isn't a permanent edit. This is just a one boot edit. So I want on initializing the system to just go into a bash shell. This is what yours is going to look like right when you hit the E button. So when you scroll down to the kernel you're launching into and you hit E to edit it, you get this. So you go down to the V-M-L-I-N-U-Z, go to the end here, make sure there's a space between the end and this, and then type init equals bin forward slash bash. Just like that. That is what you need. And then we're just going to hit control X. And what this does is it'll loot, basically boot directly in with the Bash shell. Now, it didn't launch System D. It didn't do any of that stuff. Now, with this, I actually, uh, I'm using a wireless setup here, and it's having problems. So I'm going to actually have to go back to the machine and hardwire uh, keyboard in because of some issues I have with this setup. But for you, you should have the ability to just type directly in here. And if not, it's always good having a wired keyboard laying around. So with that, I got this old school wired keyboard. We're gonna plug in real fast. Should you have a driver issue or a wireless keyboard doesn't work, always good to have a little $5 keyboard laying around. So this is where we just type nano etc forward slash f stab. We'd come down to where this is and we'll just go over to this command, delete the shenanigans we caused, control O to write out, enter to save, control X to exit. With those, we now have a functional system. Now, I'm gonna hit reboot, but you're gonna see what happens. We literally didn't launch any system processes. This just dropped us right into shell with very minimal access to things. So, by doing this, there is no uh, daemon basically launched to even do a report or a shutdown or a reboot or any of these things. All of them are pretty much you have bare minimum access, which is great because we can add it uh, a lot of our system files directly. But you do have minimal system functions. As you saw, my wireless keyboard wasn't working and we can't even reboot the system, but we can edit that file that we need. So with that, I'm going to hard reboot and let's see if it launches. And voila, there we go. We're back in. So we've repaired our F stab. I wanted to show those two methods, just doing the init equals dash bin dash bash uh, on your kernel if you from your grub menu. And if you don't have a grub menu and it's running silently, remember holding shift makes it appear on startup. So important note there when uh, just doing a, an easy edit to grub. Now, uh, again, whenever you hit E from the grub menu, that's just a one-time edit. As soon as you reboot once more, that'll completely clear out whatever changes you make. So with all that, we're pretty much done with fixing an F-stab. But let's say you have something more serious happens and you can't even launch into your thing. Or let's say you go to boot and all you are presented with is a black screen. That's it, just a giant black screen, no graphic user interface or anything. This is what's probably like a bad video driver or something of that nature. You can hold Control Alt and press F1 or Control Alt and press F2 and drop to TTY. And from here we can just sign in and we can get to our shell and edit and do whatever we need to do. So if you're missing NVIDIA drivers, you could Go ahead and use your package manager, whether if you're on Debian or Arch, you could uh, just go ahead and grab those. There's also time shift you can do. Now, I've already mentioned time shift at the very beginning of this video, but let's say you're at a shell and you're like, oh crap, I installed a bad driver. I can't even get my graphic user interface up. How do I use time shift? So if we do time shift dash dash help, it'll kind of gives us a, a listing of time shift of all the syntax remember the dash dash help that's always super important if you ever need information on a command so time shift dash dash help um, we can go time shift dash dash list and we need to be running as sudo to do time shift of course and it shows all my available restore points. So our latest restore point was earlier today at three o'clock. This was uh, number seven on the list. So what we could do is restore to that. So if we just do sudo 
time shift. So we'll do dash dash restore from pseudo time shift. And then it says, hey, which one do you want to restore? And then you just simply say, I'd want number seven and then hit enter or in for next. And then it'll go through and pull through all your settings, revert everything back to how it was and do it from here. Now, uh, I would love to show you this, but I don't want to completely wipe out my system and reload from this snapshot. Um, just know that this is how you do it. Just make sure you follow the prompts here and uh, you won't get lost and it, it'll be fine. I've used this many times. Actually, I think when uh, I made the Bedrock video, Bedrock Linux, and it completely messed up my whole system, uh, I did this exact same command and restored it uh, using back to my vanilla Debian installation that I had. So uh, it's kind of cool that you can use time shift from the command line. But from here, there's only one more command I want to show you, and that's ch root. So let's say you do not have a bootable disk or you're not able to do it. Now, uh, if I go into my downloads folder, I've already downloaded the Arch Linux ISO. And if I do a sudo fdisk-l, um, you'll see I actually have a old uh, SDC is a, a SanDisk Extreme thumb drive. So we're going to go ahead and flash that ISO to it using the command line. So always good to know you don't need that balance etcher or Rufus or all these other things to make images. We're going to go old school, how it's always been done, how it, it always works. And it's just great uh, doing it this method. So we're going to go DD for the the device and we're going to just go input file which is if equals and we'll put arch linux iso and then of is the output file equals and then this is where we put dev sda c now or sdc oh man if i put sda that would have been a really sad day yeah so uh, from here, we can just simply write this out using this section. Now, um, you can also add different block sizes and other things here. Some people like to do like a four megabyte block. Uh, however, this is the basic syntax. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And make sure you do it as sudo. So this will go ahead, go through, wipe out that thumb drive, because right now I think I have Manjaro loaded on it. Load Arch Linux ISO directly onto SDC. Okay, there we go. It wrote about a half a meg there, it took about 20 seconds. So really fast, easy way to do it. And from here, we'll go ahead and sudo reboot into this. All right, let's see if I can catch the startup here. And F11 is my boot menu. F12 is my boot menu inside. So mileage will vary on your F key. And then we'll just select our USB SAN disk. That's what we've had. And then we have that Arch Linux that we, we just basically burned using DD. So we're gonna boot into Arch Linux. That's uh, this guy. We're gonna boot directly off of here. Now this says like, hey, the system's completely busted. You can't do anything with it. Time shift didn't work. Um, and But you know there's just something you've done on your boot file or something of that nature that you think you can fix. You can always use what's called ch root. And I'll show you that. Now this logs in and it's running basically a live environment off of the USB, but we actually want to go hop over to our main drive. So um, let's go ahead and do that fdisk-l again. We're going to see, okay, which one is this? I know it's not the two terabyte drive. Uh, the actual Linux file system, if we look there, you'll see the Linux file system is on SDB2. And it is UEFI install. You can see with the EFI system there. So uh, those two things, I know, hey, that's the drive. So Linux file system is SDB. So let's go ahead and mount that. Uh, mount dev SDB2 to MNT. And then we need to also mount our EFI boot system. If you're messing around with boot, you can go mount dev SDB1 MNT boot. 
And from here, we can go into MNT and take a look at all of our files. Now, we could change something directly in here, but let's say we wanted to actually operate as the system and start running, like, let's say, install commands and things of that nature using that. Now, uh, we can just go and do what's called a ch root. ch root MNT. So from here, we are actually running in this uh, installation. Now, running directly in the system here, let's say there's a certain package we installed that messed everything up. We could do pacman-qe, and it kind of lists all the files, or let's say calc was in the name. We can grab calc, and then it'll say kcalc, or let's say, you know, it could be anything here. But these are all the things that are installed on this installation. I kind of want to do something in here just to show you the power of ch root. So um, let's see if there's something that I can remove out of here that uh, I don't really use that would be kind of cool to just go ahead and take out. Okay, I see screen fetch in here, so let's go ahead and remove screen fetch. Let's pretend screen fetch was causing us problems. <laughs> and we'll do a dash R screen fetch. Say, do you want to remove these packages? And we'll say yes. And then we can just simply do exit U mount dash all. This will un mount all of our stuff that we mounted we we mounted all that and we want to make sure they're gone and then we can do a reboot and what this does is it'll go ahead and remove that package without ever actually having to boot to this installation just to kind of show you the power of a ch root okay so we're back in our instance everything's fixed and going and if we look here we can do a pacman dash Q E and let's grep screen to see if it pulls up anything. As you see, screen fetch isn't on here anymore. We actually uninstalled screen fetch. Uh, so that's kind of a cool way to like, let's say remove packages, even on a non-functional or non-bootable system, you could ch root in, remove the packages that are causing problems or install packages that might fix your problem as well. So just as another tool for your arsenal but it's already gone a little too long on this video. I just wanted to show some of the basic ways to go ahead and fix Linux installations. Um, this is extremely valuable, especially in the server world. So many times you'll run into an old server that hadn't been booted in you know, 10 years or something crazy, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I need to actually get in this and, and see what's up. And that's where you boot from your live media. You could ch root into that install and see if maybe you could run an update or even a repair on that and see if of what, what you can figure out. Um, kind of a powerful tool, but at the very least, if you're using it for desktop, you should have your time shift back up, run your time shift. You could ch root in and then just run time shift from there and restore to it as well. So again, ch root super powerful in both those instances. So there you go. That is recovering your system in a grub machine. I absolutely must know these types of things with without them i wouldn't be able to recover many linux systems because i've made all these errors and literally sometimes i'm sitting there scrounging around trying to find these solutions on the fly and that's not the time you want to be researching this type of stuff you should just know it right out of the gate it'll save you so much time because when this happens in let's say a production environment and you have a lot of stress and other things going on um it can be a lot uh, harder to fix where if you're doing it right now in a test environment and you know about it ahead of time and you see this type of thing it's just literally going from a couple hours down to seconds which is awesome so remember these recovery techniques they're vital to recovering pretty much any linux installation but with all that said let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and a big shout out to all my patrons without you i couldn't make videos like this one and i'll see you in the next one